Shalom, beloved. A word. Let's go to the city of Corinth in the time of Paul. What kind of people are there? What are their customs? How do the women behave in the city of Corinth? How do the men behave in the city of Corinth? In order to understand Paul's word, we have to understand where he's at and whom he's speaking to. He's in a paganistic society. There are a few Hebrews there, but the church where he's at, in someone's house and the people that are coming around, what are the people like in the city of Corinth? They worship Aphrodite. Aphrodite who presented herself as part man and part woman. Aphrodite, they worshiped her. And many of the women who were not believers gained freedom through acting a certain way as followers of Aphrodite. Now another person that they followed was Dionys Dionysius. Many people call him Bacchus the so-called god of wine, celebration, revelry, fertility. And many of the women, because Dionysius practiced, he was raised in the so-called mythology as a female and then took on a male behavior. And he was a male. Many of the men at the time wore veils and grew their hair long and acted like women. Many of the women getting licensed through this cult worship of Aphrodite and Dionysius, Bacchus, they cut their hair off, they took off their veils, and the women who wore the veil were wives. It was a sign of chastity, but they took them off shaved their heads, acted like men. Most of the women in Corinth, they were part of a cult. They led worship through loud, uh, ruckus noises. And even then, they believed they prophesied. They believed they did. Just like when you think about the ball worshiper with Elijah. When Elijah wanted that fire to come down. But the ball worshiper, they started cutting themselves and dancing around. Many of them considered themselves prophesying. Okay? So prophecy does not just, it's not just known in Yasharel. Many of these other people believe they prophesy too, speak in tongues, so to speak. And the women in Corinth, they gain license to act wild, act like men. And they figured the louder they were, the more ruckus they were, the more they brought down that so-called glory of following those no-gods, Aphrodite, Dionysius, also known as Bacchus. Now Paul comes to town. And he's talking, as far as they're concerned, about a new cult called Christianity. He's telling them something. So they go in and suddenly, oh, there's one more thing. Forgive me. Homosexuality was rampant. Homosexuality was rampant. Role reversal. Role reversal. This was something where it didn't matter whether you were a male or a female or he, she, or she, he. I wonder where that's going on. Have we seen anything? What? Gender neutral? What? I'm just saying, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever they do has already been done. Hmm. Have we seen this in our time? People who do a role reversal. Okay? Now, the men are running around with long hair, wearing veils acting feminine, and the women are very forward, loud, ruckus. 
And so when they get into these houses where they are having church services, because they were none of these big buildings we have today, the women, they go into what they know. They start getting loud and ruckus. And when they get curious, because back then, women were not allowed to be educated. No. Mm -mm. Many societies did not educate women. So the women were filled with questions. And because in their cult worship, they could make as much noise as they wanted. It, can, it was considered honorable. They would look at the men and ask a thousand questions and wait, 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 wait. I need to know and who, how come? And when they hollered, they considered it honorable. It wasn't about having a spirit. It was something they considered honorable. Why? Because they were from a cultish region. You need to study Corinth during the time of Paul. They were actually doing a transgender behavior. And the men were acting like women. And the women were so loud and ruckus and acting like men. But these same said women had not grown up in the Hebrew household. He was talking to many of the women who were part of those pagan cults who came in to hear what what's this guy got to say? Let's 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 listen. Let's listen. And so when the thing, when it started, they went into what they knew. Now, let's hear Paul talk. Let's make it line up. First Corinthians chapter eleven. Any man who prays or prophesies with something on his head disgraces his head. Why? Because in the city of Corinth, the men were doing a role reversal. Long hair, acting like women. They were the ones running around with the veils. Oh, please, please. The men were doing it. Hmm. Now it's making a little more sense to us, brothers and sisters. Hmm. Any man who prays or prophesies with something on his head disgraces his head. But any woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled disgraces her head. It is one and the same thing as having her head shaved. For if a woman, a woman will not veil herself, then she should cut off her hair. But it is a disgraceful thing for a woman to have her hair cut off or to be shaved. She should wear veil. But if it is a disgraceful thing for a woman to have her hair cut off or to be shaved, she should wear a veil. Now, only the free women were allowed to grow their hair long. Many of the females that were enslaved, their hair was short. It was intentionally cut short. Remember, in the spirit, there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. They are all one in the spirit. So the female slave with her hair shorn, because it had to be shorn, she's the same in the spirit as the woman who is allowed to have long hair. Line upon line, we're going for the truth. Serve and study and show thyself approved, rightfully dividing the word of truth. See, truth is not just what we find in the scripture. Truth is truth is truth, no matter where you find it. When you find it in history, we're going to make it line up. Paul's words don't make sense, or do they? Or do they? He's in Corinth. He's in Corinth. Remember, they hollered him out of one town talking about Diana, Diana. Remember, remember? Now, he's in Corinth. They've got palaces. They've got uh, temples to Aphrodite. They've got temples to Dionysius, also known as Bacchus. Bacchus, who you can kind of call her transgender. And the men wanted to be just like him. And the women, it gave them freedom. It gave them freedom. They cut their hair off. Many of them would put on, a, is it a prostate? A false male organ, a false phallus, they went the whole distance playing their role, 
Corinth, the city of Corinth. Now they're meeting in a house. And the women are used to leading worship. No, not the worship under the knowledge that the Hebrews have gained. Uh -uh. The worship from their paganistic ritual. Now they're in there with Paul. And Paul's wondering, what in the world is going on? This man in here. Hello, Paul. And the woman, hey, what's up? I got this. He's in Corinth talking to them. And no, they were not Hebrew, the majority of those women. Okay? For a man ought not to have his head veiled, since he is the image and reflection of God. But a woman is a reflection of man. Indeed, man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for the sake of woman, but a woman for the sake of man. For this reason, a woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angel. Now listen. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not, is not independent of man or man independent of woman. For just as a woman came from a man, so man came through women, but all things come from God. Now here's a question. Listen. Judge for yourself. Is it proper for a woman to pray with her head unveiled? Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is degrading to him? Is it? Hmm. How does that work with a Nazarite? Or is he talking about the people in Corinth who have those pagan behaviors? I don't understand why I can't go up there. That's Billy talking, not Billette. Okay, wait a minute. Where is it at? Judge for yourself. Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is degrading to him? How did that work for Samson and Absalom? Wait a minute. But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. For her hair gives her, is given her for a covering. But if anyone is disposed to be contentious, we have no such custom. Nor do the churches of God. I wonder why. They have no such custom. This is Paul talking. Hmm. We have no such custom. Now, I know some of the men pulled their hair. They cut it at a certain point. But line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. He said it's a disgrace. He wasn't talking about simply because the men had long hair. No, it was disgraceful because of the behavior. The men were wearing veil. Hello, Paul. It's my turn. I'm Bobby. It's a disgrace. Then he comes out like the women. I'm beautiful. It's a disgrace. Now, when you saw Absalom, there was no disgrace. When you saw Samson, there was no disgrace. When you looked upon Nazarites who took a vow until the vow was, the time was up, was it a disgrace? And for a man to have his head covered. Hmm. Hmm. Didn't the priests wear my trees upon their head? He's talking about the people in Corinth. Because of their culture, their paganistic, homosexual, transgender behaving culture. That's what makes it a disgrace. Here comes a sister. She cut all the hair off. Some women wear beautiful showing short haircuts. But what about the other one? She didn't cut it off for fashion. She playing the role of a man. Paul looking, mm -mm, cover your head. Cover your head. He's trying to get them in order. You don't think so? During their religious beliefs and festivals, pagan, they would get drunk. Remember the guy, the no god, Dionysius. He was the god of wine. The god of wine and festivities. This is where Paul's at in Corinth. The women are getting loud because this is how they did their religious celebration. 
So he has to tell him, you got to be quiet. Be silent. Well, I got some questions. Go learn at home with your husband. Just go home, learn with your husband. They were not educated. They were out of control. And their behavior, men and women, he's addressing both. See, many people want to talk about just a woman. Cover your head. And I tell you honestly, brothers and sisters, and make no mistake about it, I will cover my head every time I come on here before I cause any of my brothers and sisters to stumble and fall because of a veil. My head is covered. My head is covered. But what was Paul talking about? What was Paul in Corinth? Because I hear this conversation. There's a few people that sent me messages I was trying to answer. My computer is doing its own thing. I'm on, I, I'm going to keep going. Cause we, all right, wait a minute. We're still in 2 Corinth. Mm. Now he's talking about the Lord's Supper. He's talking about the Lord's Supper. Oh. Chapter 11. Verse 20. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. He's talking to those people in Corinth. Hmm. What are they doing? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. For when the time comes to each, each of you goes ahead with your own supper. And one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. They getting drunk. Does that sound like the Hebrews up in there? Hmm. Now, wait a minute. For when the time, what do you, what do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the churches of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you in this matter? I do not commend you. He's talking about the behavior of the men and women in Corinth. This is where this is coming from. And he tells the women they should be silent because they're ruckus and loud. This is what they're used to. And they think they 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 prophesying and making noise. And it's like, now remember now, they're in the house. They're not in the big building. Excuse me. And here's the thing. Now he needs to put order there. He needs to put order. Because it's not just the women doing it. Wait a minute. You got some people just speaking in tongues, disrupting. You got other people, this one prophesying, that one prophesying, this one prophesying, that one prophesying. Wait a minute. Let the prophet be subject to the prophet. One falls silent when the other one speaks. And uh, the one over there getting loud, speaking in tongues, because even in those pagan cultures, they too thought they were speaking in tongues. Wait a minute. I'm telling you. Study what? was the culture of Corinthian like Corinth, the city of Corinth, like when Paul went. They howling, screaming, making all kinds of noise. This one over here falling on the floor. Swear that they prophesying. Who, who, whose prophecy are they giving? Whose prophecy? Oh, you don't think other cultures do it and believe it? Hmm. Remember Elijah and those so-called priests or prophets of Baal. Remember them? They start cutting themselves, trying to get a word, trying to get a word. Hmm. Hmm. What are the people in Corinth doing? Now we know some of them, they're at the Lord's Supper, stone cold drunk. Stone cold drunk. The men, why are you talking about the woman and cover her head? <laughs> Look at that man just walked in. They were practicing transgender behavior, homosexuality. There was confusion going on. That's why Paul even goes into that. Now, I, I got to find my right scripture. I'm trying not to lose it in my books. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Bear with me. Because um, here we go. I'm in... 1 Corinthians, and I think I said 2nd, but this is 1 Corinthians. I'm in chapter 14, verse, help me, help me, 35. 
if there is anything they desire, okay, I'm going to go up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Yes, what I just talked about. For you can all prophesy one by one. They doing it out of order. This wasn't just women and people. This is in a paganistic society, brothers and sisters. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is a God is a God not of disorder, but of peace. He's a God of order. So he's teaching them. They ain't acting a fool. Let, let's, let's just break it. They acting a fool. They doing pagan worship. Thinking they're following Paul. And Paul got straightened them out because it's getting crazy up in there. Somebody so loud right now if they was doing it. They speaking in tongues. Don't nobody know what they talking about. He said, wait, if there's not an interpreter, please. Six of them are over there prophesying. I can't make heads or tell out enough. Prophesy one by one. God is a God of all. So now you have to wonder, hmm, what spirit is really moving them? You in the city of Corinth, below. Now, as in the churches of the saints, women should be silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be subordinate, as the law also said. Find me the law, my Lord. Find me the law. He's talking about the disruption. There's a disruption. They scream at how. They think this is how the service goes. That's how they pay this thing rituals go. Wait a minute. If there is anything they desire to know, let them ask their husbands at home. Why? They so noisy and so distracting. Women are in the forefront of the pagan worship. They can make all the noise they want. They can ask all the questions. They're in the front. But not under the law of God. God's a God of order. Is that the law? Hmm. Wait a minute, beloved. For it is, a, it is shameful for a woman to speak in the church. See, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's shameful. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're going to go to the book of Romans. Chapter 16, verse 2, and talk about Phoebe. This is coming out of Paul's mouth. So something, you got to make it line up. You got to make it line up. God's a God of order. He's not a God of confusion. Hmm. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a deacon of the church, which is a Centuria. Now, different scriptures read differently. Some say a servant. Paul says she was a deacon. How does that line up with what he said? Unless you understand the city of Corinth. Homosexuality run wild. We need some order in here. Men act like women. Women act like men. And here's the thing, even though the women were acting like men, they still were not educated. So every time they heard something, because they were bold in their own um, religious rituals, paganistic rituals, they go ask, they, what's that mean? Wait a minute, wait a minute, don't say, what's that mean? You got to quiet down, sister. You got to quiet down. Which women is he talking? And when he tells the men, it's a shame for their hair to be long. Any brother, any brother, if you go along with everything Paul's saying, as though that holds to all the Israelite sisters, and I'm not saying does does. I'm just, I know not nobody on here got long hair, not a man, because according to Paul, it's shameful unless you understand the culture. That was going on in the paganistic behaviors in Corinth. And it was shameful because they run around acting like women. They they got they stuff more puffed up and pretty than the women. I mean, gold lace. They playing a role. And the women playing it too. 
You need to read about the culture, the paganistic behavior in Corinth when Paul was there. He had to tell them women to be quiet. Nobody could make heads and tells what was going on. For it is shameful for women to speak in church. Or did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only ones it has reached? They're usurping the man. And let me just say this. I'm married. Oh, I'm married. Okay? I don't try to usurp my husband's authority. I do not. The average woman nowadays is educated. In those days, they were not. And in many countries and many cultures, they did not educate women. So the only way they did learn was through their husband. Here's a new faith. Here's a new faith. For it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Mm, it is. Be quiet. I got this. This is shameful the way this woman talking. Mm. You need to read about the culture in Korea. Or did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only ones it has reached? Let's go back. Now. Samson didn't cut his hair. Was it shameful? Or is he talking about the men and the way they behave, the way they present themselves? That was shameful. Is it shameful for the high priest to put on the mattress, to wear the matron? Is that shameful to cover his head? Or is Paul talking directly to the cultural conditions of the time? It's just a question, beloved. This is going so long, even though there were many things I wanted to go over. Samson had long hair. Absalom had her long hair. Did nature show it was shameful for them? Absalom was spoken of in a glorified manner from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. His beauty and his hair. Woo, wait. It didn't sound shameful, line upon line, precept upon precept. Samson's hair, it didn't sound shameful. And there are women, women who were slaves, they would cut the women's hair off or cut it short. He's talking about the culture and the paganistic habits. You might say, well, he's teaching the word of God. Okay, okay. When we first came into the truth, right now, some people were still eating pork because they didn't know they had the paganistic behavior. Some people, through no fault of their own, they didn't know nothing about no Sabbath as far as they was concerned on Sunday. Because that's all they knew. I wonder. Beloved, I'm not going to stay on this very long. They considered it shameful for a woman to speak. How can you prophesy with your head covered? Pray. Enter. If you got to be silent. He's talking about the culture. Correct. He's talking about the culture of the people. Read, Google it. What were they doing when Paul got there? How were the men act? Hi, I'm John. He got the Joe got the prettiest veil. He got the longest hair, it's all dyed up. It was shameful for him to have long hair because of how he carried it. It was shameful for the women to talk the way they did because of the behaviors they brought in. Can you imagine being in a Hebrew gathering and somebody bring a bucket of crabs and a couple of ham sandwiches? Would you consider it shameful? 
What if they didn't know any better? Just a word, brothers and sisters, just a word. I was going to do a completely different piece. I didn't even finish this. But I want you to know, personally, before I ever did anything to make anybody fall, I would wear veil. I would cover my head. I got love for my people. I don't want to do anything to harm anybody. I want good for us. We had plenty of bad. One faith. One spirit. Shalom, beloved.